This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Welcome to the channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And today, yes, you did see it in the thumbnail. We're going to add 20 terabytes SSD drives to any PC, whether it's a mini PC, whether it's this mid tower. This mid tower only holds four hard drives or a full desktop. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use five of these four terabyte drives. But hold on a sec. You will not believe the price that I found these at. I got these drives for $29 each. So we're gonna do five of these to get us to our 20 terabytes, that's $140. Now because, uh, because we're gonna be putting these, uh, this is gonna be option to put in any size PC, we do need something to house this. So here is a hard drive enclosure and I did want to buy just an SSD enclosure, could be smaller and I do have some of those coming uh, for my next video. And you don't want to miss that one because that's going to be a mini server using SSDs. 30, up to 32 terabytes. But it, anyway, let's just go ahead. So what we're going to do here, this is, a, this is a hard drive enclosure. Now this takes both SSDs and regular size hard drives. And I wanted to get the uh, SSD version of this only, but they were out of stock. Plus this is way cheaper than the SSD version. Um, this costs about $80. The four drives cost about $140. It does take about three weeks to get from China, but they came, I tested them, they work great. So we're gonna set this up on this uh, Dell mini system here. We're gonna set it up using Windows storage spaces to create our RAID array. Then we're just gonna copy a few files and check out the performance. So this is TG, let's get started. Uh, where I got these drives from. So uh, they are on uh, they are on AliExpress. Uh, they're twenty nine seventy five. That includes shipping and handling. You do have to be patient. I sometimes I'm leery buying stuff on AliExpress, um, but it, again you have to be patient. It does take three to four weeks to 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 arrive. Uh, but they did come, and obviously we're going to go ahead and talk about that. But man, this is I have never been able to find a deal this good. Um, on any SSDs or NV, they have great deals on NV four terabytes as well. Now the quality of this, I'm not going to say the quality because I don't really know. Um, eventually, I am going to make a server out of this, and it's going to be a server that I read and write to all the time because I want to see how long if I start getting errors with these drives. But for the time being, they seem to work fine. So obviously, this is going to make a difference. But um, I it. For some reason, it gave me a little bit of a discount when I bought it, like a dollar forty discount. And so, but with tax and everything, it was close to one hundred fifty dollars. But without the tax, it was one hundred forty. Um, so, when tax is different in your area, however that works, that's why I say one hundred forty dollars. Um, but hey, you just can't beat this deal. Cannot beat it. Um, I'm excited because I do have two more in this series of that I'm going to create servers with these drives. So let's go ahead and talk about the storage for a minute. Um, this is the Orca 5 bay drive enclosure. I wish I could have had a SSD drive bay enclosure because it's smaller. Um, the next time I do this presentation, I am going to have two of those, two, two smaller ones. But this is $80. Unfortunately, this but uh, <clears throat> the 5 bay SSD, the cheapest one I could find was $140. And I just don't want to pay $140. Um, so I went ahead and got this one here. It does have a fan on the bottom to help keep things cool. Um, but anyway, that's your five bay it's enclosure. Again, all these links are going to be listed down below uh, where to get all this stuff from AliExpress and eBay. Okay, here I am at my Windows desktop. And um, for this demonstration, I'm using two Windows PCs. And the, this particular one where the SSD enclosure is on, I put this grayish background on. And then the other desktop you're going to notice, notice is the default Windows background. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into File Explorer and one thing you're going to notice here is um, when you plug in and turn on the drive um, all of these hard drives are going to show up. They've already been initialized. Um, a lot of new hard drives aren't in, uh, initialized so you have to go and initialize them. Um, but here they're all initialized. They're all formatted. You can copy. In fact I already uh, copied some information here. Um, 
But what, we're, what we want to do though is we want to make this, um, we're going to use storage spaces to combine all five of these into one drive. And it's kind of like a RAID 5 that we're going to be doing. And so, so the first thing we're going to do here then, and, and you saw the data was on that one drive, and it's fine because we're going to go ahead and, and uh, reformat it so it'll be gone. But what we're going to do here is you're just going to type in uh, storage. And then a space and hit spaces and it'll come up right here. And this is manage storage spaces. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. We're going to say create a new pool. So we're going to create this new pool. And we are going to click on each one of these SSDs. And you'll notice it says here external. USB 3 SSD drive. Now um, you'll notice that it's 3.63 terabytes instead of 4 because all hard drives, none of them come, um, none of them are a full uh, size. They are, they're always short of whatever they are. So that's normal. So we're going to hit say create pool. It's going to prepare the drives. And then uh, once you're in here, um, It'll, it'll ask you what drive letter you want it to be. Oh, I'm just going to leave it the default. You can put whatever drive letter you want. And then it's going to say, it's going to want to know if you want NTFS. And if you're in Windows, you, you're going to want NTFS. All right, so two-way mirror, we don't want that. We want what's called parity. And this is similar to um, RAID 5, but it's a little different. But for the most part, just consider it RAID 5. So um, all, all three of our drives, there, or all five of our drives are not, there isn't any drive in the world out there if it says it's four terabytes, it's four terabytes. That the manufacturers always round them up. So it came up. So all five t uh, hard drives total 18 terabytes. And with our, um, with our parity that we just added, it'll give us 12 terabytes. Okay, one thing I do want to show here um, I forgot in storage spaces you can so this is what I did because it took it down to 12 terabytes and that was way too low because I mean you're talking um, more than a hard drive so you can change your maximum storage sp storage size and I'm not an expert on storage spaces so um, I'm more familiar with RAID 5 and RAID Z, RAID Z 1 and 2 um, RAID, RAID 6 but you can change this this the, this automatically it put it at 12 I put this at 14 um, and therefore I, I gained two more terabytes so I just wanted to let you know that you can do this and I already hit change so I'm, I'm not going to do that again so let's go ahead and create that storage and now we've created our our storage pool and that is on a uh, drive letter D. So let's just go ahead and open up our file manager and we'll go to, to this PC and we can see here's our new storage right here. Now if you if you wanted if you didn't want parity then you could get those 18 drives by just striping it um, but I would suggest parity. Again if you don't want parity then you could get 18 gigabytes out of your out of those drives. But for this demonstration, I think most people are going to want parity, so let's just go ahead. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a new folder. So I'm just naming it STOR for storage. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I want to share this drive. So I'm going to I'm going to right mouse click on it, and I'm going to say properties here, and I'm going to go to sharing, and I'm going to go to advanced share here, and we want to share this folder. And so, and uh, you can put a limit on this if you want. I'm just going to leave that as a default. Permissions, we're just going to let everybody have access to this and we're going to allow um, full control. So let's go ahead and apply that. Hit OK. OK. And then we're just going to close this. And now we've created a share for this folder. Now, in order to share this folder though, through our home network, we need to activate uh, sharing. So if we type in up here, uh, network sharing, so if we type in network here, ah, 
Um, so if we hit view network connections, um, if we just go back, hit network and internet, and then and then up here, what we can do is we can say connect to a network. Now, if you don't have network sharing already um, enabled, when you click on this, it'll ask you, do you want to enable it? I've already enabled it, so it's not going to ask me. Oh, excuse me, sorry, not network share. I'm sorry. Um, so we want we want to view networks on our computer and devices. So we just click on that. And when you click on that, it'll it'll ask you um, if it's not activated, do you want to activate sharing? And you'll say, hit yes. But once we've done that, we want to just go into this network and sharing center. So we'll go ahead and click that. We want to make sure, uh, so what that does is it turns on your network uh, sharing. Um, it'll ask you if you want it to be private or public. Um, when that comes on be sure to make sure that you make it private because then it's just limited to your household only um, so that's very important now the other thing that we want to do here is we're not requiring a password on here so we have to click on this bottom one that says all networks and this password protection it'll it'll automatically be to the on position but I'm turning this off because we don't want to have to share that with anybody we don't want passwords it's our home network so I don't care if you wanted a username and password on that folder then you could activate that and you could add those in there but for, I'm just for this case it's this is the simplest way to do this so let's just go ahead and so now we've created that share okay so what we want to do now is we want to share that folder to other computers in the house but in order to first do that we got to find out what IP address this computer is so the fastest way to do that here is just type in CMD that's the command prompt and all we're going to type in here is IP config and that's going to give us the network address for this computer which is 192.168.1.210 so now let's go over to our desktop computer and, ha and get access to our new mini SSD server. Okay, here we are on our desktop, and now what we want to do here, uh, and again, if you don't have network sharing on here, you'll have to activate that, like I showed you on the other PC, but let's just go ahead and open up our file manager here. We're gonna click on network, and we're gonna go ahead, and this is where we're gonna put in that IP address, so we need 192.168. And you'll see that I already have it there, but I'm going to type this in anyway. Um, and we're going to type in .210. So now let's go ahead and click on that. And now here is our store folder that we created. And we want to go ahead and map this um, folder. So let's just go ahead and let's say you're going to right mouse click on that folder, say map network drive, and and be patient if you already know how to do this. I'm just I'm just showing this real quick. And uh, for those that don't know how to do this, oops, I'm going to make it S for storage, and then we're just going to hit connect. And we didn't need a username or password. And now we can go ahead and we can create uh, some folders in here create a folder call this test and then if we want um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this movie over this movie is about five gigabytes just so you can show the speed there and it's gonna operate at normal networking speeds it's a, it's a one gigabyte and that's your normal networking gigabyte speed um, it works great and you know this is a whole thing and it might it might fluctuate a little bit here and there but Okay, one thing I want to talk about is when copying this file, this that movie file over, um, it started out okay, and then you'll notice is that <clears throat> through here it starts to take a dip. And part of the reason is is because we're we're using RAID, and we're using a a form of RAID five with storage spaces. Anytime you do that, storage spaces has to create parity. So when it's copying the file over, and depending on your system and everything else, and again I'm I'm copying this through a USB device. Uh, that's got all five of those SSDs in there, you're going to see some drop in performance. Now, if you didn't want to see that drop in performance and you didn't want parity, 
um, then you can go ahead and stripe that or Windows calls it a simple uh, format and, in, and what I did is I went ahead and did that and you'll notice here that I, I've got a straight even one gigabyte throughput to those drives so again remember if you're and if you're familiar with how RAID works and and parity and stuff like that then this is not a big deal um, and I will mention at this point I, I when I create servers I usually use something else other than Windows to do it but if this is the only machine you have and it's convenient it's very easy to create that storage space and use that now as a little mini server um, even as part of your desktop okay I hope that was helpful um, I just want to talk about this for a minute because I didn't probably make it clear enough. This does hook up to your USB port. Um, it comes with the USB cable and a, and a brick that you plug into the wall. Uh, but as, as you can see, this is an easy way to take any PC, whether it's a mini PC, one of these mid towers. Uh, again, this only holds two hard drives, so there's no way I could put five of those in there and have a little mini server uh, for your home. Now, because of this, it's not going to be a great performer like 10 gig or anything. And I did actually install my 10 gig networking cards and copied it over and it did help the speed a little bit but again you got to realize you're you're being um, held back um, by the bus of the of the computer and the USB drive as well but it did it did copy over faster with my 10 gig card so if you had a two and a half gig card that even that would be even even better um, and 10 and two and a half gig cards are fairly cheap but if your system doesn't have two and a half gigs, then it works fine. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I cannot believe the price of these drives. And this opens up a whole new avenue for me and how I'm thinking of my servers in the, in the future. Anyway, this is TG with Tech Made Easy. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Now that was easy peasy.